What's up guys and welcome back to another tutorial. Today we're going to be talking a little bit about exposure for exteriors. And we're going to be discussing what I'm looking for, the outside shots, you know, the inside. If you watch any of my videos, which you can see right up here in the corner, you have your ambient, which is the natural light in the, in the house, from outside, from inside, all that stuff. Then you have your flash, then you have your window pull, and then you have your whoops shot where it's just in case you got a reflection from your flash, it's the exposure of your window. Well, today we're gonna dive into exposure for outside. What to expose for? Because if you're shooting on a sunny day, like these images I'm gonna show you, it will be really bright on the ground, especially if it's a white ground, like I'm gonna show you here. And then you have a sky. Well, you don't want a blown out sky. You want it to be a perfectly exposed, well-rounded image. So I'm gonna show you what I look for in the two images that I take. I only take two, so let's dive into it. Here's my images. Shift and click. That will highlight them all, open with. I have Adobe CC, which is all the apps. You can see right here, every app that they have, I have it. But I like to use Classic, Lightroom. Okay, you can see the check marks right here. And this is a light gray, that means it's ready to import. If it's for some reason, if it's a dark gray and the photo looks blacked out like that, make sure you have it checked. You can uncheck or check all. If you're doing a series of you know 100 images, make sure you have them all checked. Import. Once they're imported, you can push D and it will start developing. So you see right here, it's all blown out. It looks disgusting, okay? But in my first shot, I'm not exposing for the bright areas, I'm exposing for the shadows. So you can see back here, I'm looking for the detail of all that right there. Like I want to have good exposure for all underneath here because if I'm exposing for the sky or the ground, you can see that all of it immediately begins to black out. So I need all of that detail. So we're gonna do full bump, but I want that exposure down. Now remember on this first image, I'm just looking for, you don't want an unnaturally bright you want it to look natural still. So I'm looking for that. My exposure is gonna be a little high because it's reading the entire image, but I'm looking for specific shadows, which is kind of the opposite for inside of a house. You're getting that histogram kind of right of center. Well, this doesn't really matter. I'm looking at what I want. And I go to the next one, do a full bump. Kind of brings out the detail and all the shadow. I know it's sunny out, so I want that. And you see that I have a real fire going right here. So I don't really have to worry about that. So I'm not worried about this. I'm looking at the sky and I'm looking at the sunny parts. Because then I'm going to take this and blend it perfectly with this. Okay, so this is, uh, th the exterior shots are by far the easiest out of all of the Flambia technique because this is not anything to do with the flash. So it's really easy. So shift click and you highlight them all, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. As I say every video, I suggest, I will leave a link down below, that you get a Wacom tablet or any kind of tablet like this that you can mark on with a little pen. Makes your job a thousand times easier where you're not trying to do it on a little trackpad or with a mouse. Shift and click. If you have Flambian technique, you're doing all the photos, you're just doing the exterior. Shift and click the first and the last and it'll highlight them all. Auto align layers, auto, boom. Now I click the top one, I do alter option, and put a black layer mask on. And I push B, and that will bring my brush tool front and center. To make your brush bigger or smaller, if you push the brackets right above the inner key, left or right, so you can start painting in the shadows. I'm just kind of dabbing, trying to see what's up. What I'm looking for is shadows. I'm not trying to go too crazy with it, because you don't have to in this. Because the beauty about this is that no one knows what it actually looks like. So you can make any place dark or bright and it's completely fine. Nobody can say, well that's not the way it looks because they don't know. Push L, call out this little guy right here. I'm gonna brighten it up. If you ever make a little dot and you don't like the way that it is, push delete and it will go back to your last dot. 
So then B for brush. I just want to take it, lighten it up just a tad. Give a little life to it. Command D will deselect. Now look. See how dark it was and how much it pops now? And how long have I been doing this video? Like 10 minutes. And that was just to take it from Lightroom into here. And once you get it, flatten image, command save. Back into Lightroom. I have my after edits. I'm gonna bring that exposure down. Come down to the saturation. I'll make that blue pop a little bit. Up here, make sure I got all the, I mean, look how easy that was. A few minutes and you got a, a perfectly exposed image. So to recap on the first image, I was, uh, it was really sunny, I did F.8. I still, I left my ISO at 400. I don't care. If it's good enough detail for inside when I'm doing inside stuff, then it's good enough for outside. So I don't ever mess with it. One five hundredth of a second. Super fast. Then my sky exposure, two thousandth of a second. Still F.8, ISO 400. Put them together in the Photoshop, bring it back in, deliver it to your client, crisp blue sky you have detail on the ground you can see in the shadows easy perfectly exposed image in a minute or two so thanks for watching if you like this video give me a thumbs up and if you have any questions about exteriors or interiors leave me a comment below and i'll make sure to make a video specifically for you thanks and i'll see you next time